Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for the continuous suggestions, phone calls, and comments. Keep it up, guys. Today, we're back to our Women in Agriculture vlog where we look and visited Mrs. Dallas Farms, where she's both a rabbit and a fish farmer. So, we're going to look at how to get a full time teacher, someone who's studying to become a pilot, uses rabbit rearing as on her spare time to solve personal problems and to also use it as an income earner. So let us tour with Miss Dallas, which we actually caught doing work on her farm. So we got right into it. Oops. Let's go guys. Okay. Okay. So like if water is left back, we have a bottle arm um, that we normally pour it in and we use this to water the plants. Oh, okay. So instead of we Mm-hmm. Keep your water recycling. Right. Hi Fluffy. So what kind of breed is this? Um, mixed between New Zealand and Flemish giant. Well, giant. Eight and a half pounds the last time I weighed her. So you do rabbits for right, so what purpose? So the intention for sale as pets as well as meat purpose. But we haven't reached meat stage yet as we don't have the numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's the aim. So we're aiming for at least 90 this year. Oh, okay. So what's, what's like the average price for like a rabbit as a pet? Alright, as a pet, it depends on the age range. So for us, I'm um, anywhere between um six five to eight five. Okay. So that's the price range normally. And what does it take to manage rabbits? Time, patience, and love. Mm. If you don't have the time for it, then it doesn't make any sense. That's if you don't love it, then it really doesn't make any sense. I see a lot of love for animals. Yes. <laughs> They're very sensitive um, animals, so the slightest or anything, you can lose them. So you have to pay attention to them. So how you manage this? Like what's what? Give me like a a quick synopsis of how you manage your your day with right, these so rabbits. It starts early in the morning from my boat. I wake up normally 5:30, so I get out, um, clean their stuff, to sanitize everything. So I sanitize their water containers. Just put them out to air dry. Um, while I feed them uh -huh. and play with them a bit, interact with them and just give them their feed and that's pretty much it for the morning. Sometimes I'll have a little small space enclosed where they can run about and so that they don't feel confined to the space and they can pick up grass and anything like that. Oh, okay, okay. So they're not always confined to the cage. So how much, how much like, grains you give your animals each day? Um, it depends. This minute they eat a lot and then the next minute just a couple of grains. But something small like this, just a small amount. But you really have to study their eating patterns. Okay. When they would eat a lot, when they won't eat a lot. The dose is definitely for sure you know that they have to have um, feeding on a regular basis throughout the day, especially if they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. But pretty much for the most day, they're relaxed, they don't eat like a lot at a time. Mm. They're pretty. Is they're it easy, mostly. easy, easy to, to manage? Yeah. So what's some of the, the major challenges that you face with this rabbit? I remember once you called me and saying, boy. Mortality was yeah, a major with, issue. With the kittens. Why, why, why is that? What do you think was the problem? Um, or? After a while I realized that for, especially for the last set that died, was fecal consumption. So it's very important that you have to clean out the cage on a regular basis, especially with the small ones, because they're not like the big ones that would know, all right, this, you know, you don't eat that. Mm -hmm. But for the small ones, they just pick up anything, and especially their feed containers, I always, even though I don't have it now, um, due to affordability, it's always best that you have hanging feeders. Okay. And you don't leave feed in the container, especially overnight. Mm -hmm. So you can give them feed in the mornings, for the rest of the day, you can give them grass. Depends on the system that you have set up. But like in the night, we have a issue with rodents. Okay. So we don't leave, um, especially in that patch over there, we wouldn't leave feed in there overnight. As you know, rats will come in, urinate in the feed and stuff like that. And you know, leptospirosis uh -huh. is another issue. But the other issue that we have um, is just mortality really and affordability of feed. So we try to give them a lot of natural stuff like vegetables, fruits, because we have a couple of fruit trees, papa being a major one, mm -hmm. and I eat a lot of that. I find that they like that. Grass, and just that basically. 
clone um it may say that a female which was this one over here so we're just watching her i'm supposed to palpate her tomorrow mm -hmm. to see what's going on if i can feel anything it can come on has a little mic issue it's supposed to get um i go make it look Dark. So this is Sebastian. Right. So he's going to be our service book. And this is what breed? I don't remember the breed out my head right now, you know. I got him um January? About January, February. Um for Sebastian, he has a mite issue. That's one of the major reasons why I isolated him from the other books. And I normally advise other person when they have animals with um, any ailments, any illnesses, to isolate them because one of the major things that can lead to mortality, especially um, on a farm, is to have one animal that's ill. That's one of the things I learned from Khalil. Is to always isolate your animals when they are sick so that it doesn't spread um, to the other animals. As mice is something that's very contagious. I had a serious issue with it um, when I just got them. As they weren't originally mine. So, but I took them from somebody who wasn't able to care for them anymore. And they had terrible mite issues. So you treat the mites? Alright, so I give them Ivomec. Point to note, always consult your vet first. So, not because I say it and it works for me, it doesn't mean that it will work for you. So I just put a couple drops um, in their water for maybe about two or three days or up until the, um, the issue is resolved and it normally clears it up very quickly. It's important that you wash your hands before and especially after. Here if you can use our gloves then that would be even better. So Miss Dallas, why, why rabbit farming? Um. Initially, that wasn't the plan. Okay. But um, circumstances, a friend of mine, as I said, they weren't originally mine. And he wasn't able to care for them. So I said, you know what? Let me take them. Because at the time, I could afford to take care of them. So I just took them from him. And that was it. Yeah. And just turned a rabbit farm. Right. Overnight. <laughs> Pretty much overnight. So how this rabbit farming affect your, your normal life? What were you doing before? Teaching. Full time. I was teaching full time. So what is um, from twelve to eighteen. So it's a remedial institution that I teach at. Okay. Right. Every time I video call them and talk to them about the rabbits and they enjoy it. They enjoy it. Right. Some of them got the chance to actually see some of them. Not here but when um, I had I to keep them at school. Not for the a period of time, but they came to the school. For me to transport them here. Let's <laughs> cuddle for you. You might well cuddle up. Hi, baby. It's supposed to um, have their toe, the toenail clip. Because oh. it's very sharp. Very sharp. Scrape you up. Yeah, if you look all of the marks that you see on my hand. Yeah, rabbit marks. So it's not a domestic issue. <laughs> Every time I go, people ask, why are you making cut it? I like, I don't even understand. It's your rabbits. Right. Protective, but sometimes I don't have the time to even grab something. Protective too here. So what do you plan to do with this rabbit business outside of say boy uh, meat and pets? Um what else do you plan to do with All it right, really? Uh, for therapeutic purposes, um I mean it's not something personal, it's something that everybody that not everybody but I suffer from PTSD at times. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a therapy for me. And I plan to say open it to other persons who are interested in that avenue as a relief for depression. Get so to get through it. I like that because farming really it trust me, it is really helps it helps helps with And I can get up in the morning and look at the animals and interact with them. It's it's very relaxing. So yeah, I know I follow you on, on your both IG, Facebook, we we friends. Mm -hmm. I see your plan to do like I see you doing aeronautical or something like that. You plan to become a pilot or something? Right. Wasn't the original plan, but the opportunity came up, and I jumped at it. Mm -hmm. So you plan to be a pilot, teach, 
on the rabbit farming? I eventually plan to retire from teaching actually. Okay. Right. For personal reasons. But I love teaching. I mean, I am fascinated by my students. Um, being able to just shape the future generation. No posi doubt. Positively impacting them. And they're all boys. Okay. I always enjoy working with boys. Um, trust me, teaching is amazing. So I eventually would have to retire from it. I want to find out how do you know if it's a boy? Um, it's kind of hard to tell at the initial stages, but as they grow along, you'll notice that their testicles develop. Alright, so when you're checking for this, it's extremely important that you are careful. You are very careful. So it's evident, evident that their testicles are there. So for the smaller ones now, unfortunately I don't have um, any, let's say, young doe that I can show you. So you have, to, you have to cut your grass and... Right, so I got my cousin to cut the grass. Normally it's me, but I got him this time to cut it. And it's also very important, even though you, if you know the source that your um your grass is coming from, it's also important that you wash the grass. For me, I know where the source is coming from. It's clean. There's no contaminants, any um fertilizers, anything like that that will cause any harm. And they're actually pre pre washed before they came here. Oh, okay. And place it right. I don't practice giving them straight green grass. I pick it in, pick it in the morning. Mm -hmm. or pick it in the evening and give them um, in the morning also biosecurity practices is a must again learning that from Khalil if you're coming out from under the road so normally we'd sanitize um, our shoes our hands whatever alright so back to the um which one I'm going to want to come here let me examine you hey listen you're going on camera best behavior please <laughs> Hey. Right. So you look at their rear end. And this you do it as gently as possible. So if you notice the penis is out. Uh -huh. Another way, if you look again and notice closely, there's a jerking. There's a twitch. Yeah, so that's twitch. another way you'll know that they're males. Oh, okay. So these actually were um, born in this hutch. This was originally the, the maternity section. Mm -hmm. right. So this was actually from a litter of 15, but again, mortality um, cut them down to five. No. From 15 to five, wow, that's yeah. crazy. Of course, mixture of girls and boys. So this is the other maternity section. Of course, we label it. So at least you know that just regular housing does not occur here. Okay, okay. So why this one inside a little pan inside? Alright, so this is Isla. This was actually our first dog mm -hmm. that came. So Sebastian jumped her. Don't know if he did anything. But we saw when he jumped her, so we're just watching to see. We're just watching to see. So if it is that she's pregnant, of course I'm going to palpate tomorrow to find out. To explain explain palpate. Alright, I can demonstrate for you actually. So with the palpation and normally think about cattle. I can do it for rabbits as well. I, I, I realize the big issue was palpation for rabbits. Alright, so when handling them you have to be very careful, very, very careful. It's not going to kill you. So you have to be very gentle with them as much as possible. Alright, so you normally would have a flat surface mm -hmm. that you'd rest them on. Okay, you try to keep them as calm them down as much as possible. And this is Isla's favorite part of the day when I massage her. Because I normally do that to my um, rabbits. You, you need Miss Animal Comfort, surely. Try to keep them comfortable in every way. Right. 
So you can put just a small cloth over their um, eyes mm -hmm. when you feel um, your stuff. What you really feel? Of course, for? the babies. Oh, okay. But as close as um, it gets closer to the due date, you feel them a lot. Feel them a lot. So you be as gentle as possible. You don't press them because they don't want to hurt. gestation period is very um, short, it's not yes. anything prolonged, anywhere between 20 to at least 35 days after mating. Yeah, that, that's what people love with it, the right. short gestation period, I mean a lot of, lot of kittens, a lot of offsprings, right. so it's, it's one of those maybe a good livestock to have, but my issue with it is, is the market in Jamaica, the, right. the demand the for rabbit meat. Taking time. Um, opening mm -hmm. and especially with COVID, there is a serious demand for them, especially in Boston in Portland. Okay. You know, they normally jerk stuff there. I mean, it's not a common meat that persons would eat. Yeah, that, that's 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 a thing I'm looking at. Um, you know, demand for, for, for the, the rabbit. There's meat. a guy, um, Lloyd Sterling, um, a great advisor. Mm -hmm. um, he's one of the persons I consult with. Um, when it has serious rabbits and he does um, this rabbit round rabbit where he does rabbits in different styles barbecue, That's nice. curry, um, jerk rabbit so, and persons do support him yeah, I, I think, I, I think, I see that there is a there's, there, there's a potential for it to grow because you know you can see, I think oh, by Maurice you can get you know, jerk rabbit and I would sometimes buy it more than I have chicken really? Hard to um quickly click for the rabbits with darker toenails. You notice the nerve endings and flesh and whatever it is that's here. Mm -hmm. So you don't go too far down when you're clipping. They must look really sharp. They are sharp, as you can see, cuts all over. Check the gender, but sometimes their gender is evident not burn as well as um, it may not be so evident so the other day we just used genishan violet which the bottle right there yeah cost them the and mark so the ones that would have on their foreheads would be the box it's not something permanent yeah i understand right. so, oh, so you're not ready for his feed now you mark okay you mark right. the box i'm going to violate you now so by what age you you kind of do your separation at four weeks as in separation from the mom? Yeah, and and, at four and then separation in you know box separated from females. Normally, um, we do the separation from the box from the female at about two, two or three months. Okay. Right. Okay, so this right here, she's a female. As you can see. The males now. Hey, 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 hey. And these ones there, toenails are very sharp. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know you're managing that. Yeah, comes with the job. There's a small little thing there. <laughs> hey, baby. These only animals are now having given birth. So what kind of preparation steps you take before? Sanitization, sanitization, sanitization is mm -hmm. key. Um, for the nesting boxes, mm -hmm. um, I normally sanitize it um, when they're in there, at least once per week as they grow older. I sometimes have to change the nesting material at least once per day. Sebastian, he prefers the drier grass. And for the others, um, the other is a little bit greener. Not too green, but he likes dry grass. You see, instantly starts eating. And also, um, when feeding your rabbits, it's important that you don't change your diet so rapidly. So, um, the 
tell us how normally you feel it, depending on the um, availability of it. As if so you have to slowly um, change your diet. Yeah, that's, that's a key thing for, for animals most overall. Overall, especially for ruminants, because when the bacteria in the, the rumen get used to a particular a particular feed type, you know, they kind of shift in that direction. And once you change that feed, so it throws them off. Yeah, it show them off. Just like us as humans, we don't like a sudden change in anything. Yeah, no doubt. Right. And if you have dried grass left over, um, we normally um, have a compost heap around the front mm -hmm. that at least once per week we do a major clean up and we'll put the rabbit manure there but what i can say is that jamaica really take on to this composting thing because a lot Trust of farmers are especially see, natural i see doing it natural stuff big sort of space but let's all eat out on um, the space oh point to note too all right so these are four of the fish ponds that we have um on the property to our lease and to our ours so, so you do fish farming too right so we do tilapia fish farming so this one I'm um, recently emptied it for it to dry and we'll sanitize um, when we're going to put in a new stock. Mm -hmm. and what we call the Moses grass are the grasses that you see right there. Mm -hmm. So we normally have them removed. Okay, okay. And we have catchments that run on the property so we'll pump from here. Oh, and, and, and pump, pump, pull up the pond. And I see. It normally takes, depends on the size of the pump, but on average maybe a week. Depends on how often you pump. So how, how much, what's, what's the capacity for these pans that you have here? Alright, so each pan has a capacity to hold at least 6.5. Mm. Right. As you know, you can't have too much in the pan for them to grow um, properly. Properly, yeah, yeah. So it's about 6.005. Right. Okay. So currently there is 12.5 in this pan. Reason being, that pan um, isn't cleaned as it. So as soon as I reach a certain stage, we'll transfer them over. Okay. So the other pan. They so won't see them come out now. Yeah. Um, and it's all that feed. So, normally, so you feed feed your fish. Alright, so strictly hyperfeed um um fishes. Well you feed them hyperfeed. So this is the source that we get our water from. So, you have so some it's not a it's not a natural source. But, not um that? irrigation people send down water, you'll have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. So look right there, you see bubbling activity going on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you see that bubbling activity fishes are there. Are there, yeah man. Right. See so you have goats walking up and down. But them, them keep your, your lawn. Right. Well manicured. I don't mind them though. It's nice. So, so I know this community is big for fish farming, so how organized you guys are? In terms of? As in like a regarding marketing effort groups to kind of get um on we have a programs group, group but persons just do their thing you know mm -hmm. persons just do their thing is this, is this an expensive operation yes it is you can run in the millions just to do the setup just the setup big in the pan is a big, very big expensive very, can very imagine. expensive so this is about half acre i think um when fish wizard came and measured it mm -hmm. You can actually put two houses on this, just one pan alone. Um, space wise, yeah, yeah, about, yeah, quarter acre, quarter yeah, acre it's lot. Very, um, big space. All right, this is great, Miss Dallas. So feed, um, in the initial stages, three times a day because you don't want to feed them too much. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you're noticing this pan, water is green. Yeah, why? I don't know if it's overfeeding for them. Mm -hmm. As I said, these aren't, it's open, but we lease them. Yeah, yeah. So that's what led it to become green. Most likely probably overfeeding. Overfeeding. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for the first day that they're here in the pan, you would feed them, you would allow them to get accustomed to the water. And eat whatever um, stuff they find in the bottom. So do you do any aeration in your pants? No. no. Just the natural aeration? Just natural aeration. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I make it this wide. And it's expensive to do that. Yeah, you can have to, yeah. Okay, you need good surface here for breeze too, so. to kind of blow into this. And it's very windy down here in the day. Okay, it's so you get, you get over that. Right. Okay. Space. So what kind of yields you'll get out of one pond? Pound wise, mm -hmm. about... That's if you don't have a serious mortality. Mm -hmm. Maybe about 
18,000 pounds. 18,000 pounds. Okay. All right. From both pans, that is. Yeah, from both pans, we give you the 18 because yeah. if it's six, five, six thousand yeah, animals, yeah, you can buy a pound each. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Nice. Thank you guys for watching this vlog, and I hope Miss Dallas can inspire us and let us understand how diversified agriculture is and how is it that we can use these different systems to fill some gaps within our social economic status.